Robin Slim Show. That's us. Brad Let's Myers. What's up? What's going hey, sorry, on? Sorry, man. My, I got my, my number's blocked um, anytime I call anybody. So Yeah, I, I, I can understand that. Message, so. Yeah, I, 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 Slim actually thought of that because we had a problem a while back with people pranking us, but... Well, yeah, I, I figured, you know, it's, wait, it's wait, been wait long a second. enough. Don't give yourself too much credit here, all right? <laughs> Pranking you guys? Come on now. I know, right? Who? Yeah, I'm, really. just, I'm busting your shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for calling I, us, I was Brett. calling up to prank you guys. Uh, ooh. I, would, I, would, I would be honored. I saw one of your pranks. Yeah. I was dying when I was doing the show prep because it said you, you tricked uh, uh, one of the other pitchers on the Phillies into thinking he got traded to Japan. <laughs> I don't know what you're. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh my God! How long did you pitch for, Brett? Um, I pitched for uh, twelve seasons. Wow. Too too long, I think, for most people. Yeah, that is. That's a long career, man, in Major League Baseball. No, no, no. Too long for people that had to watch that shit. <laughs> <laughs> What was your favorite team that you played on? Because you were on the Phillies, the Astros, the White Sox, and the Indians. No, that's the second. That's the second time somebody's asked me that question today, and I'm gonna respond the same way I did. That's a stupid question because I won a World Series with the Phillies, and I went to the World Series twice in the playoffs three times in my career. So that's yeah. pretty obvious yeah. for me who my favorite organization. Plus, I, I figured plus that because I was, you were there the longest too. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. That was the organization that I got brought up with, and it was kind of like that was family to me. You know, that's the only family I knew. Yeah. yeah. You know, as, as eight, 18 years old, besides the family I had at home, other than that, man, that, those people took care of me and put me under their wing and stuff like that, dude. So I, there, I, I ain't got nothing ever bad to say about the Phillies that's, ever. That's and amazing. So yeah. What um? Is, but are, they, they, but it was a family type organization, man. They. They really took care of me, man. They they, they raised me. That's you know? cool. Yeah. Are there any teams like op opposing teams? Like, what is your least favorite team? All of them. <laughs> whoever I played, whoever whoever I played against. <laughs> I love that you had a shutout against the Red Sox. I I hate the Red Sox. Well, yeah. Well, I you know it's it's not that I have a have a had a quarrel for the guys on the team. It was just more or less I hated. I, I didn't like any team I pitched against that day. You know? Yeah, like there was, there's like an unwritten rule in baseball, and I kind of abided by it. That's probably why I was, everybody thought that I was such an asshole all the time because <laughs> because I, I would not talk to you if I was pitching against you. Wow, you know, against the team because I was just like, nope, I ain't talking. I don't even want to. I don't. I, I want. To, I wanted to hate you so I would perform better. Yes, I, I heard too. You know, there's and, like an unwritten law too. Like if one of your, you know. uh players got hit by a pitch you, you were supposed to hit one of their players you know the the opposing team i played the fifth I don't know where you're <laughs> <laughs> you can either I never threw it anybody it. yeah <laughs> i never did that no no they just walked into it <laughs> that's right I, yeah, they, it, you know what i used to say it's their fault they didn't get out of the way yeah really exactly. <laughs> that ball's only coming like 94 miles an hour they can't they can dodge that yeah i don't i don't know if you ever watched me pitch but i might have used to hit 94 at one time but uh in my later career they, they were enjoying to get hit because they were laughing at me after i hit them <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm throwing 80, 80 poo. <laughs> what goes when you when you play for a certain? Is it the arm or is it is it your like the elbow, the other shoulder? parts of your body? Like what what really goes as a pitcher? I would think. What do you shoulder. mean? Like, well, uh, I would say age. Yeah. You get. You get I mean, because well, honestly, I mean, for me, like it was it was my elbow. I never had any problems with my arm my whole career. And, okay. Um, and uh, I was fine. I had hip surgery. Which is kind of weird, but yeah. yeah, I had a I had I had hip surgery in '09, but uh, my arm was always fine until I was with the Indians, and uh, it, it just overuse, you know. Yeah, like, that's, that's right. I, 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 I coach I coach my kids' uh, travel ball team, and I'm watching all these kids. Man, it makes me sick, man. I, like I I just want to go over and punch the coach right in the right in the nuts. Oh, man. they're overworked. Because I'm like, 
Yeah, they're they're killing these kids, man. Like I don't let our kids throw in a tournament sixty five pitches over in a tournament. These guys are letting these kids throw eighty pitches one day, then come back and throw forty pitches the next day. And I'm going just to win a tournament to make yourself look like you're a good coach. You know what a good coach yeah. is? A good coach is the guy that that these kids come back to and go, "Hey, coach, thanks for doing what you did for me." Yeah, I know my you buddy know I mean? that's Chris. A, that's a good coach. Man. My buddy Chris I got did that like in that, in, so. in uh, like high school. He played ball and he was burnt out. He could have went on to play, yeah. you know, in college yeah. and, and major league, well, but that, uh, he he just couldn't one take thing, it. The one thing my dad did for me was he he was like everybody wanted me to play for them when I was younger and stuff because I mean. Obviously, if you end up being a first rounder, you got some skill, and people want you. Like we want you on your team. We want you to pitch for us and do this. And my dad's like, he ain't going. Like he ain't doing it. Like you're not gonna blow my kid out, you know? Yeah. Like, he, he was just, and he didn't know the same way I don't know with any of these kids. Like there's kids that have huge amount of talent, man. I, I've I've seen it over my career and stuff, and I see him just fizzle out. Like you, you take a guy like Jose Fernandez right now with the Marlins had Tommy John already. How much do you think that those guys used him when he was younger? Yeah. He's, he's a stud now. That's yeah. like, you know uh, what what's his like, face? Like, that's like, uh, what's his face that's pitching now? Strasburg? What was, oh, was yeah. that Strasburg? Would they shut him down after so many uh, so oh, many dude. pitches or something you know, like but that? See, but you're, you know what? Some of these organizations, like, when I came up, that didn't happen. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. That, that didn't happen. They're, they're like, because they, they bred you for what you were in the minors. They took care of your arm in the minors. Not in the big leagues, man. Like mm-hmm. you're up there, you're a piece of meat, man. Go out there and do your job and go throw out there and until your arm falls off. Well, that's like throw a, until it falls off. I, I I was sad seeing Andy Pettit the last couple of years because I'm a Yankees fan and just watching him towards the end, dude. It was like, it was really sad. Well, you know what the thing is is that Andy threw a lot of innings, man, and you know it. it it's sometimes here's what I was told when I was younger, man. And I'm talking about I've had some good baseball people around me. And I've had Chipper Jones, high school coach. He was my high school coach for a couple of years. And wow. With Rick Wilkins. He had Rick Wilkins, too. And he told he told my dad and myself, and I'll never forget this, he goes, you only got so many throws in your arm. Yeah. And I was like, whatever, man. I can throw for days. <laughs> really I was like, well, I can throw for days, man. And then all of a sudden, man, there, there was like – that time when I was I was relieving with the you know I was with the Astros and, and closing and then I got over to the White Sox and man they were using me like every day and I was like I don't care give me the ball I don't care I'll throw it. until it blows out I am good so it was bothering me and then I signed with the Indians and I felt like you know off season strengthening and everything like that would be fine well it was fine until I got halfway through spring training and I was like man that's just barking. Ooh. Well, you it's know, gonna but, be like but, the tendons but, and stuff, right? That's, that's yeah. Well, I tore my flexor tendon and strained my UCL, but Ooh. I was still, which is Tommy John stuff. Yeah. So, and I was just like, man, just cut it open. I don't care. Like, just do it. Like, get, let's get this junk over with or whatever. But it didn't need yeah. it. I know but Tommy it was bothered me. It, but that, it bothered me. It just stopped hurting. I was just a, able to throw BP last year to my kids. Wow. Like it's like two years down the road, man, and, and like I feel like I could come back right now, dude, and at least throw seventy eight, man. I could get mm. the people out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you could. I yeah. was wondering that. Does that ever go away? Like the the urge or you know the want to to well, perform again? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why it went away, and and, and it was it was getting to that point the end of my career when I left to go to Arizona for spring training with the Indians, and it was it was crazy because. I saw my kids for the first time ever cry that I was leaving, oh. you know, and, and dude, that hurt me, man. That hurt me. And I, I'm, I'm like this tough exterior dude, man. But yeah. you know, when the kids are like this, like dad, we ain't going to see you for a while type thing. And that got me. And then, and I, I was like, you know what, when, when my arm went out and everything like that, I was like, I, I'm not a quitter, but mm. I let them make the decision for me that I was kind of done yeah. from that point on, man. I've, I've had so much fun with my kids and everything. You know, my I got four kids, and you know, my daughter rides horses, and and my my ten year old plays travel baseball, and I've had so much fun actually watching him develop as a baseball player. And then I got a five and four year old that have no idea what the hell they're doing. <laughs> I just, we just have way I practice with them tonight, man. I'm I'm out there like 
whatever hair I got left, I'm pulling it out, man. It's, <laughs> that's not that's that, because because you know what you know why because I missed those days with my with my ten year old because uh, I was gone playing. Oh yeah. So I didn't get to see all that this crap. I guess. <laughs> you know, I, I would come yeah. home for the fall and they were not keeping score or nothing. And I'm like flipping my lid going, why are we not keeping score, man? We're kicking the crap out of it. Everybody <laughs> hits. Everybody stays on base. There's no out. I don't like that. They don't oh. keep. No winners, no oh, losers. Yeah. I, I think you just. Oh, it just... sucks, man. Yeah. It's, it's, that daddy, it's that daddy crap that really drives me crazy that every kid gets a trophy, and that's why these kids are pansies. Uh, and sorry. you're never going to get another great. Yeah. You're never going to get a great player that way. No no, baby. No, roots. man. Yeah. It, it, it's Dude, crazy. It, it, trust me, man. I, I grew up in the in the era of, um, hey, man, if you get if you lose or whatever, you better not accept that, man. And I had I, – hell, I, I was coaching the team last year, man. I had six kids quit because – because uh, not quit, but go to another team because they said I was too tough on them. <laughs> you know what? They need they, to get wait, better. Wait, 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 The kids didn't know they were very good ball players, man. But the mommy and daddy were like, they're only 10. Why are you yelling at them and trying to get on them like that? Because I'm trying to make them the – because that's the way I be. was taught. And yeah. that's exactly the way these kids need to be taught. That's a, I was just going to say. That's what a coach needs to do. I will thump them until they get better and better. Yeah. You know, like, but, but there is a certain time where you got to lay off and you got to, you know, learn how to coach the kids because mm. every kid has a different personality. Yeah. So, but, but when, when you're showing me lack of effort and stuff like that, that really irks me, man. Like yeah. you, you just showing you don't want to be out there. That really drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I, was, I wanted to, I wanted to go over there. What I, what I, what my original plan was to tell all the moms and dads, Here's twenty dollars. Everybody go to Starbucks, have a, have a cup of coffee, and I'll see you in two hours. Yeah. I'll hand it. Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. That is, yeah, dude. I like that. And, it. But so so like, here's the thing for this year. Like, I got kids, you know, that we're coaching this year. Their parents don't say a word. They're like, yeah, kick his ass, kick his ass. <laughs> They're like, yes, like they like it, you know. Uh, yeah, that's now. Cool. I don't I don't think that a year makes that big of a difference. I mean, it does with their size and their and their body and everything like that with with a year. But it's the it all comes down to the mom and dad's mentality. What do they think of their kid? Obviously, yeah. everybody on my team last year thought their kids should be playing shortstop. <laughs> I saw <told> differently. <laughs> They didn't yeah. like that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? I see different. And they're like, well, somebody, there's no reason my kids shouldn't be playing shortstop over this kid. And I'm like, that's your first problem right there because we're not a team. We're a bunch of individuals, and you can't win with a bunch of individuals. Mm-hmm. You need to be a team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. You have to conform, man. And that's, that's the biggest thing I try to tell these parents because every one of these kids in this travel ball thing have all been the best player on their team their whole life. Mm. You know, and then and then I got people coming up and telling me that your kid shouldn't be at shortstop. My kid plays shortstop over your kid when he was five. I'm like, what? What do you want me to tell you, dude? They were five years old. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't know what they were doing. That's a perfect <laughs> assessment of their skills at five year old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, can decide well, that they don't even want to play sports anymore. Yeah. So you know. Well, here's the, here's what I like to say, man. The best thing that I'm trying to do for these kids, man, is get these kids ready for the big field. Yeah. The 69, 60, 60, 90, 60 foot mound, 90 foot bases is a great equalizer. Half of these kids that are playing baseball right now will not be playing baseball in two years. <laughs> yup, exactly. When they because they. Get- because I saw it. I've seen it. Mm. Like I had kids that were just monsters throwing gas and hitting bombs and all this other stuff. All of a sudden, that 60-90 come around, and they were like, yeah, I'm going to play football. Screw this. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, you do, uh, you do uh, band, too, right? Brett, Brett, I do band? You, you're, yes, you do band. You're, you have, you're in a band, too, right? Are you the lead singer and guitarist? Yeah. Uh, no, actually, uh, I play guitar, but I am not. I don't, I don't play guitar in the band because uh, my skills are pretty good, but my timing isn't great with the guitar. But the singing stuff, yes, I didn't. I did not want to sing when I started this whole thing. And my buddy's like, "You have to sing," and I was like, "I can't." 
<laughs> That's the first time I think I've ever said I can't in my life. Wow. And I was like, I, he goes, because I, I'm something I wasn't comfortable with. It's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like taking him who was, he, who, he played ball when he grew up and everything like that. But, you know, he played in a band Puddle of Mud, played in arenas. Yeah. yeah. You know, this huge arenas and stuff like that. And he goes, dude, you got to sing on this stuff. And I'm like, okay, you go pitch for me. I'll go try to do your job and let's see what happens. <laughs> Pretty sure we're both, we're not going to be comfortable. <laughs> You know, it's, we are not going to be comfortable at all. So the the funny thing was, is that he pushed me and, and, you know, I, I always like to accept the challenge, you know, to, to try to do it and all that other stuff. And he's, he kept telling me to keep doing it and keep doing it. And like, I like writing songs. Like I'm the concept guy and we sit together, me and him yeah. and we write these songs and I come up with the ideas and stuff like that, and then we sit down and we kind of hash it out. He does it on the instrument, and then we write around it. You know, we, we write the songs and stuff like that, and all the ideas pretty much are, are mine. And then, you know, when, when we start, you know, writing lyrically and everything, then we got to do a melody. Like, there's a lot that goes into it that I had no idea that went yeah. into it. Wow. I was just saying, man, I can just write a song about this in like two minutes and come up with everything like that and yeah and it, it sound like it sound like shit but i mean <laughs> it would be funny like it'd be funny you know like it, and you know cool and funny or whatnot but mm. um you know th this this whole thing man like i got 18 songs out now and i would never thought that i could do do it and just put it out there and you know quite honestly i'm i'm playing my first show ever, my first live show ever, and this this I'm debuting this on y'all's show because I've told nobody about this, but Ooh. I'm playing I'm playing the halftime show for the Jacksonville Sharks on April 18th, two song halftime show. My first show ever. What do you think wow. I'm gonna be doing out there? <laughs> Probably crapping on myself. <laughs> Everybody goes, hey man. Everybody goes, hey, man, you've pitched in front of 50,000 people before, dude. You can handle this. I'm like, I've never sang in front of freaking <laughs> two, two people. Yeah. Wow. Because, like, yeah, I saw that like, it you said you – I saw your bio that you had written songs, you know, while you played baseball in the off season. So I didn't know if you yeah. had had stuff going from back then or what. No, 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 no. All this is new stuff. Like, I mean, we, we were like – I'd always write some funny stuff down or whatever. And it was just like the best thing I could have done basically was get with my buddy Damon who played in Puddle because he, he's a, he's a songwriter too. And, um, it was just, I needed structure basically because okay. I had no idea how to write a song on a guitar. I can play lead guitar all day, no problem. But when it comes down to structuring a song out and putting cool riffs, he's way better than I am at guitar. Obviously, he plays bass, he plays drums. He's multi instrumentalist, and he can do pretty much anything, you know. Mm. And the cool thing was is that he would put basically the we would sit there with an acoustic, he'd play it, and he goes, "Oh, I think this would be a cool melody." And the words are easy to write, but it's how you sing them that make it a good song, like how it make it catchy. Yeah. And I, listen, I had no idea about that stuff. All I knew was what I learned over the years of how to play guitar and other songs and everything. Like I can parody almost any song and it, and just make up my own words to it and make it funny or something like that. But I really didn't have any idea of how to sit down, get the acoustic in my hand mm. and write. Like I can, lyrically, I can write anything down. But then, but it has to fit in the song, though. Yeah, you know, it could be too wordy. Could be too wordy. Yeah, yeah. You know? that's so. definitely a big challenge when you're. A... I notice a lot of that with rappers, dude. They try to get too much in a line, like they it's just like shoehorning. Yeah, like you, you right. need to and, cut it down, man. Yeah, and the funny thing is, is that my last two songs that I put out, I actually country rapped on. Was that you? We we listened to um, Don't It Feel Good Red before Net. the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me on the first part. That was me rapping. That was awesome. Cool, dude. man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, but see, the, the thing is, is that I love music, man. I, I grew up in the '90s. Took me. I, I mean, I was I was a rap, hard rock, country, Leonard Skinner. I Leonard Skinner. You name it, man. Yeah. I was 
I was digging. I loved music, you know, and I still do. And, you know, but like that 90s time when I was in high school and even a bunch of times in the clubhouse, you know, that that's mostly what you'd hear is rap. So I'm like, and you got the guys like Colt Ford and Bottleneck and these guys that are, that are uh, you know, the lax and some of these country rap guys. And I'm like, hell, I'm going to give it a shot. I don't, I don't care. I, I think it'd be fun just to, and if it sucks, it sucks. Basically, it, I was doing it for me to have fun. Yeah. And I was hoping people would like it is what it was. You know what I mean? Like, I was doing it to have fun, and I'm still doing it to have fun. And and I hope people like it. That's why I'm putting it out there, you know? Like, I could keep all this stuff to myself. Like, you know, not that I'm comparing myself to the Beatles, but they have thousands of songs written, and nobody's ever heard them. Yeah. You know? And... So I was just like, we, we did a couple songs. I was like, I think it would just be cool. The main thing why I started this was that, that was to have fun. But now I think it's kind of cool that, you know, I'm a fan of Elvis Presley. Like, I really love Elvis Presley. And, you know, especially his Christmas album. My God. A couple of mimosas and Bloody Mary. Whew, that guy will get you going. But, I tell you. but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the, the funny thing was is that, I was thinking to myself while I was, this Christmas while I, was, while I was listening to him, I was like, man, isn't it so cool that his family that didn't even know him gets gets to hear his voice and know who he is? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I thought that's cool, man. So for me, it's like my music, nothing's in vain, you know? So my kids will always be able to hear my voice even if I'm gone. And even yeah. my grandkids, my great, great, great grandkids, they'll always be able to know what I sounded like. I've thought about that about or, the show. Like, even though I've said some of the most embarrassing things, maybe like, you know, yeah, they, they always get to hear. Right, man. That, that, but that's, that's like a different way of looking at it. And that's kind of the, where I was thinking to myself, like, yeah, it's costing me some money to, to put these songs out and stuff like that. And I'm okay with it because it, it's kind of like an investment if you think about it because they'll always be able to go, hey, here's your grandpa, here's your great-great-grandpa, whatever it was. Yeah. And, and it might inspire those kids to go into music and learn the stuff that, that we were doing. And, hmm. you know, kind of like it did with me with Leonard Skinner, man. Like, those guys were gone. I never get to meet them or anything like that. And, you know, most of them are gone. And I, I was like, I'm never getting to meet those guys or nothing. And, and uh, like, th that's inspiring to me right there you know yeah dude. and then i don't even know them but i mean <laughs> i do know some of them now obviously i mean the guys in the band like i've met a bunch of them the lead singer now which is ronnie's brother johnny and i was gonna so, say i mean because they're from jacksonville so i'm huge jacksonville guy I've yeah never left home and i and i never will you know born and raised here and I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm a homebody, man. Like, it's <laughs> not like cool. I'm a hop. Like most of these ball players, they hop up and they go, "Man, I'm going to California. Mm. <laughs> I'm getting out of Minnesota. I'm getting out of Minnesota." I said, "I probably would too. It's kind of cold there." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Florida is a cool place to. Florida is nice. Yeah. Shit. Well, see, I'm in this. I'm in the northernmost part, so it does get cold oh, here. Okay. But <laughs> yeah, we're we're what they call. It's like in the song, and don't it feel good? It's like Jacksonville, Florida, aka Southern Georgia. Like yeah. We're I'm, I'm, we're like thirty minutes from Georgia. Oh wow! Yeah, so so it's crazy, but we're just we're just a bunch of rednecks like have fun around here, I guess. <laughs> People well, never got that about me when I played, though. No, <laughs> they they never knew I was just like. A, like, if they'd have listened to Leonard Skinner a little bit more, they'd have known I was just a simple man and I didn't want to be bothered. Yeah. <laughs> just go let me do let me go do my business and I'll have fun. And, and, then, and then now I flip it back on top of me where I'm, like, trying to sing and do all this crap and write songs, trying to get the public eye back on me, which I, I don't know. I, I kind of enjoyed the fact that it was off of me <laughs> for a few years. But, yeah. but now it's like, you know, doing shows and talking to people and everything and I guess I can relax a little more now. I was when I played baseball, dude, I was a t such a such an a hole just just because of the of the task at hand. I, yeah. I couldn't let my guard. I couldn't let my guard down. Yeah. I could, they, nobody really got to know me because I was afraid to let my guard down and didn't want to didn't want to step on, you know, outside of the boundaries. Yeah. Wow. But but that's pretty much where it comes from. That's awesome, Brett. We have to wrap this up, dude. 
But thank yeah, you so much for talking to us, bro. Yeah, man, you got it, man. That was amazing. I had a great time. I, where can everybody find you? Uh, they can find me on Twitter. I'm Backwood Rebel 39. You can go to my Facebook uh, page. It's uh, facebook.com backslash Brett Myers Music. And, uh, you know, just go on there. And I'm on Instagram, too, at Backwoods Rebel 39. So I post stuff all the time. Just, you know, there's crazy stuff. There's funny stuff. And I'm, I'm on Periscope, too. I don't even know what that means. But <laughs> some, somehow it, I'm, I see my face and I video it. And, Nice. It's not very pretty at times. <laughs> but it's all good, man. All right, dude. Thank you again, bro. All right. Thank you, guys. No thank problem. You. Have Thanks, a good man. one. All right. All right. You guys have a good one. You too.